cancer, um, which is a relatively rare type of cancer um, in terms of there's not a lot of like research on it and not a lot of funding for it. Um, and it's very rare for someone to get ovarian cancer when they're very young. Like they consider early onset ovarian cancer to be when people are in their 50s. And I was diagnosed when I was 26. So that's like kind of just out of the blue, like a random chance kind of thing that's very unusual. Um, my initial treatment was surgery. Um, they removed tumors and organs and things that were affected by the cancer. Um, and then that was followed up by chemotherapy. Um, I'd always been interested in martial arts since I was a kid and I had cousins who were in karate and different kind of martial arts, but I never had the opportunity to do it myself. Um, and in 2008, I moved actually onto Crawford Street, which is the street that the gym is on. And just being in the neighborhood and walking by, I decided, you know what? There's no reason why I can't walk in there and inquire and maybe start training. It's something that I've always wanted to do. So that's what I did, and as soon as I came in here, they had like a free trial period sort of thing, and I, I was like, I don't need a trial, I'm signing up, I'm ready to go, you know, after the first class, I was like, this is for me, you know? Sure. Yes, definitely. Yes. Um, sometimes I'm a little bit too competitive. There was one time where I was in a tournament, I didn't want to lose, and I didn't tap and my arm got broken. Yeah, I'm a competitive person. person, but I've, I've gotten better at losing as well. Like that's one thing that Jiu-Jitsu teaches you because you can't win them all. You can't win every role. You can't escape every submission, you know? So it almost teaches you how to be a good loser as well as a gracious winner. The moment. I have purple belt at the moment. Uh, there was a lot of ups and downs, especially for for me, just because I was on treatment a lot of the time, and you know I had a broken arm and I had different injuries here and there, and different periods of time where I couldn't train just because the treatments took like such a toll on my body that I had to like sit back and just kind of take time off from training. So I think every time I've progressed through a belt, you know, from white to blue to purple. It's always meant so much to me because it's not just overcoming like, oh, I know certain techniques and I know how to fight and I've competed in these tournaments. It's also like I've overcome a lot of other obstacles to get there. I would say definitely that martial arts has made a big difference. And it's not just the practice of it, although that does help, you know, because when you're on the mats, that's what you're focused on, is the training and learning. And when you're rolling, you're not thinking about anything else. You're not worrying about tomorrow or what the next day is going to bring or what else you have to tackle when you leave the, the gym. It's like you leave all that outside and when you're on the mats. That's all that there is, you know. But in addition to that, Training at Toronto BJJ is awesome because it's like a family environment. So not only did I find like a martial art that I like and that, that's meaningful to me, but I found like a, an extra family that, that rallies behind me to offer me support and encouragement. And you know, I even remember the second time that I, um, I had a recurrence. So I had like 2006 where I was diagnosed and I. Um, had chemo and I had surgery and then I had a period where I was cancer free for a while and when I got a recurrence I was at the gym training here and when I started getting the chemotherapy again all my hair fell out and a bunch of my teammates I wanted to wear like kind of like an ear guard kind of cover that covered my head just because I wanted some privacy like I don't mind some people knowing but our gym has like 600 people and you don't have a personal relationship with all of those individuals and to some degree you can't hide 
that, but I wanted a bit of anonymity. So a bunch of my teammates who knew what was going on wore the same kind of hat as I did. So like a bunch of people were wearing them, and the people who didn't know were like, oh, why is everyone wearing these hats? But they did it like for me so that I could have a little bit of privacy during that time. You know? Well, I had a scan about a week ago that showed there's some disease progression. So the current treatment that I was on was stopped because if, if the disease is still kind of moving forward, there's no point in sticking with that current regimen anymore because it's obviously not effective. So now I'm at a point where we're deciding what to do next. And um, one of the things that's on the table is the Avastin. Mm -hmm. Um, which is not a chemotherapy because the consensus is that my body or the cancer in my body is very resistant to chemo after six years. Even though there's different types, they all act in a similar <coughs> fashion. It doesn't work that well anymore. So this drug isn't a chemotherapy, it's a anti-angiogenesis drug, which basically means that it targets the blood vessels that feeds the cancer and destroys the blood vessels so that the cancer starves and shrinks and hopefully it dies. So we're kind of looking at tackling it from another angle. And there's some other treatments that I'm hoping to do as well, thanks to like a lot of this fundraising that my teammates have been doing. Um, well, in some ways it's humbling. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of people who are dealing with a lot of difficult circumstances in their life as well. <coughs> but I think what the term warrior means to me is just not giving up, you know, not, not giving into despair either, not throwing in the towel, you know, realizing that there's always tomorrow, there's always another fight, you know, there's always another option that you can explore. It's not over till it's over. It's just part of the lifestyle. Like this isn't the only fundraiser that this gym has done. There's been a lot of people who have been in bad situations. Even people who've done fundraisers for people in Brazil or for different other students who have had, you know, different tragedies that have occurred in, in their lives and need help. You know, it's just part of the lifestyle, it's part of the culture. That, you know, you, you can't do everything maybe, but you can do something. And if we all do a little bit, it can end up being really big. And I think the response that, you know, this, is, this fundraiser has had and the momentum that it's generated really shows that. That even different academies who are, you know, competing against each other in tournaments, can come together and work towards the same goal, and that to me is amazing. You know, you can put aside your competitive spirit and work together to fight a common goal, you know. Mm -hmm. I think, like, you, you can have your, your times where you acknowledge what's really going on and you're upset and you have, you know, a bad day where you're like, this is terrible. Things are getting worse, this is not the way I wanted things to go or whatever, but you can't stay in that place. So I think you give yourself like a day or two to have maybe a pity party if you need it, because those feelings are legitimate and you have to kind of get them out there. But then you gotta start to think, I don't wanna stay here because your life is ongoing, you know, as, as we speak, and if you're just sitting and being upset and miserable and thinking, why me, poor me, you're missing out on that day and the next day and on what you could be doing and who you could be interacting with and you know, the loved ones that you could be spending time with or things like that.